All right, let's talk about the dynamic microphone inductor. There's a couple different types, but we're going to address one. Um, now, the problem with it is, is that it's electromagnetic induction. So, you know, the biggest thing we need to understand that to understand what's happening. So let's see if we can get a little bit better understanding of electromagnetic induction. All right, Wikipedia says electromagnetic induction is the production of an electromotive force or voltage across an electrical conductor due to its dynamic interaction with a magnetic field. Well, I'll just be totally honest with you is I read this entire thing and by the time I got done with it, I really had no idea how exactly they had applied that to the microphone. I had some idea of what was happening there, but there was no really direct relation to it as far as I could tell. So what I did, um, with all due respect, it probably did, but I wasn't catching it because it didn't seem to have a direct relation to the application I was using it on. So let's dig around a little more. All right, uh, upon some further digging, what I've come up with is that the concepts are related. The problem is, is basically that we're dealing with a coil of wire and magnets and trying to produce an alternating current with that so that we can get some type of sinusoid and if you watch the videos I did on sound um, in the other videos I told you to watch that you know the sinusoid that it's trying to produce it's basically pushing the diaphragm in and let it coming back out and because of the velocity it's an increase in voltage so let's take a little better look at that all right, so basically when you're talking about the sound wave, you're going to have compression and rarefaction. And if you can see an example of it here, and what happens is the sound wave is hitting the microphone hard, like a louder sound will be louder, and it'll hit that sound wave will hit harder, and then it releases with um, rarefaction. So compression and rarefaction, compression and rarefaction. And the louder the voice is, the farther it's going to push it in and then come out. And that's going to, it's going to be velocity there's going to be velocity there because the louder the sound is, the faster it's going to go in and out and the farther it's going to go in and out, which is going to increase the velocity. So that's a little kind of hard to get a hold of, but try to keep that concept in mind as we look at the actual transducer. All right, so try to keep in mind when we're dealing with the compression and rarefaction of the diaphragm on the microphone that it's pushing in, increasing the, vo the, the, the voltage, then it's dropping down as it as it re rarefaction and then as it compresses it's pushing the voltage up rarefaction compressing down so that's causing the cycle of the sinusoid that's going to cause the complex waveform and you should have watched all those videos to understand what's happening there all right so now we understand that is that when these waveforms hit the diaphragm here that you're getting compression and rarefaction and the louder the sound is the more compression and the more rarefaction you're going to get. So the actual diaphragm will be going in a little bit or way in and out. So one of the things to keep in mind that the actual velocity, the louder the sound is, the more velocity that diaphragm is going to be moving in. So that has a direct relation to the current. So let's take a real quick look at the construction of this, of this dynamic mic. Basically what you have here is you've got a magnet, and you've got a center pole on this magnet, and the magnet goes around to the other sides of it also. In the center, what you've got here is you've got what is the diaphragm material on the front of the microphone, the face of it, that the actual waveform interacts with and pushes in and, and lets out from compression and rarefaction. And you have another piece of the diaphragm that actually is connected to this frontal piece that goes down into this cavity so far. And you have wire wrapped around that that keeps it from touching the magnet that's inside of it that's an inductor, a coil, a, a coil of wire that's an inductor that it's separated from the magnet so it doesn't touch it from a certain uh, amount of space, but that it has, it's inside its magnetic field. Okay, so that's pretty simple to understand. Now, what happens how does it capture the sound? Well, we basically understand what's happening is when the sound wave hits it, it pushes in the diaphragm from compression and rarefaction releases. And then when the next wave hits it, compression, rarefaction. When the next wave hits it, compression, rarefaction. So the harder it hits it, the faster it's going to move it in and out when it does that. So a smaller waveform 
is going to hit it and drop out and it's supposed to be slower velocity so what's happening is it just pushes that diaphragm in which it causes this coil wrapped around this magnet to go in and come back out which causes a sinusoidal waveform just like when we we're looking at this complex waveform that while we're looking at this complex waveform it pushes it in it pushes it in and it may not be totally you know a sine wave would push it in you know compression would go along here then it would start to release and then it'd be rarefaction here expansion of the diaphragm it would come back in it would start to compress again or rarefaction again on the underneath of zero seeing how this is zero this black line here and the more complex waveform like me and you were speaking that it would be more complex it would be a little bit more erratic looking and you understand that from watching that video that i told you to do on on um, complex waveforms so that compression is going on here it might not be steady it might have a little bit of waver to it and then it's coming back out now what happens there so we understand that what's going on there is that diaphragm is getting hit with all these sinusoids that actually make this composite waveform the complex waveform like the timber of our voice because the timber of our voice is is made up of a bunch of sinusoids right so we understand that from looking at those videos on timbers so now you have those combined sin those in combined sinusoids as that timber all hitting together at the same time so what happens we know that at each given point that like let's say we're going to say this point right here so at this point right here or, or any point this point here let's say right here on this complex waveform it's a combination of the the magnitude of this waveform at that point the magnitude at this wave point at that point and the magnitude of this waveform at that point that causes this magnitude to get red so that's kind of what's happening when it hits the diaphragm so that's the reading that it's getting that why that it might look a little erratic so that's real simple to understand the concept's a little complicated but it actually is very simple to understand that basically it's just pushing this wire forward and coming back out that is basically causing a voltage difference so it would be positive going in then it would come back to zero and then as it expands it would be going negative you know just like a sinusoid goes positive and then hits zero again and then goes negative and then comes back to zero through its cycle so basically it's creating a complex waveform or drawing the complex waveform if you look at my arrow as it pushes in compression and then as it drops back down it starts to release and then rarefaction as the diaphragm expands which causes a negative reading and then it comes back to zero again and it just kind of goes like that and that's how you end up with this uh, just a simple sinusoid which obviously that's going to look more complex when you're singing into it or something like that but the concept's pretty easy to understand that this is just wrapped around the magnet with an inductor that's pushing in and coming out that's causing an increase in voltage a release in voltage and then a negative voltage does that make sense so that's pretty simple to understand okay so one thing to understand is that you know try to keep this concept when you're talking about compression and rarefaction of this diaphragm when it compresses and then rarefaction comes back out the expansion of it try to think of it like some type of floppy drum that you know when you hit the drum head it goes in and you push it in and when it comes back out it'll hit the same spot that it was at before you hit it but then it expands out again a little bit and then comes back like a swing like if you got a swing in a stationary position and you push on it it goes forward and it comes back to where it was when you first pushed it and then it comes back a little bit and then comes forward again back to zero so try to try to keep i'm trying to keep this as simple as possible so nobody has to pull out their calculator just to understand what's happening there so that's a pretty simple concept to understand so that now that when we're looking at the actual transducer in a dynamic microphone that we've got a pretty good comprehensive understanding of what's happening and anytime we're looking at any other type of different construction on a, a dynamic microphone that those basic concepts should apply so that when you know if we're looking at some dynamic microphone that's constructed a little bit differently that the basic concept of what's happening there should be basically the same so you know we we should be able to apply that to just about any dynamic microphone we come across 
I mean, there's more than likely going to be some chance you're going to run across some dynamic microphone that might do it a little bit differently, or it might have had have some other things do it that it's doing that they're trying to make it better or worse or whatever. So that basically now with that understanding, we can sit here and look at just about any type of dynamic microphone and we can say we can look at it and we can understand the diaphragm. We can understand the inductor wrapped around the diaphragm material and the magnet in the center and the magnets on the side and basically kind of what's happening there with a pretty good understanding no matter which dia what no matter what dynamic microphone we're looking at we've got a pretty solid understanding of what's happening there correct so what else should we talk about okay so we come right back to the first problem we had when we were talking about components that okay i just called sure and i said i want to know what mylar you're using for your diaphragm um the components of your magnet and your inductor material well you know i got an answer on the inductor coil uh, on the wire that that wasn't too big a deal but nobody's talking about the actual mylar and how they for, you know what the mixture was for it um the magnet or anything like that because it's a trade secret so how you're going to apply that to which one is better is we have to go right back like we had talked about before and really, you know, and analyzing the microphone with all the things we understand. So basically, now that we understand the actual, you know, the transducer that is the dynamic microphone, that now we can apply the other knowledge that we've already talked about to that actual transducer. Does that make sense? And it's very unlikely that you're going to get from any, you know, good microphones that they say are quote unquote good um de any definitive answers about those materials so basically um the other thing to look at is that when you get a, a dynamic microphone is that you my suggestion would be for you to ask about the magnet to ask about the inductor material for the coil of wire and to ask about the material for the diaphragm because most other things you're not going to have to worry about it because we're just looking at the transducer itself so those components are going to be something you want to look at and to get for us to sit here and go through a whole long series of of what materials might be in there um i i don't see that being you know productive so basically that with the things that we've already talked about that are in relation to the actual microphone being able to understand and relate those concepts to what's happening that we've just talked about in this type of transducer. And now that we understand how this tr transducer functions and we understand it well, that now we can go back and apply the other concepts we're talking about to about how that might be affecting that transducer, how things outside of it might be affecting it, how the actual transducer might be affecting those things. So let's just kind of take a look at that. All right, so if you stop the video and you go back and think about the things we already talked about, how can you apply all the issues that we were talking about to that transducer? And how many of those issues can apply to that transducer to help you understand that? Well, we're going to make, now that we actually understand the transducer and the basic concept of what it is and the complexity that it's trying to, you know, trying to produce from the sound waves, um, we understand the sound waves and what's happening there and how they're hitting it. We understand what it's trying to do, how it's basically trying to write those sound waves into some type of alternating current so that we can get some type of complex waveform from whatever timber and dynamics are happening from the production or the instrument or whatever is happening. So we've got a pretty good understanding of what it's trying to do and how it functions. Um, I, I think we have a, a very good understanding of that at this moment. Um, so basically the next thing would be to do was, well, let's take in the next video, let's just take a look at a couple of those things. Let's take a little bit better look at how some of the components of this microphone might be affecting some of the things we've been talking about to better be able to apply those issues we're going to be having to actual components and functionality of that transducer. So peace, hope, love. See you in the next video.